Good morning. Good morning. I want to welcome you here this morning to the Montana Baptist Church, whether you were a guest or if you were a guest joining us via the media systems that is available through all the technology that the world seems to have. I want to welcome you here. Uh, I want to make a special announcement. Uh, 46 years ago this day, I stood down in front and I married that young lady right there. <laughs> and she still has you. Yeah, she still has me. <laughs> That's wonderful. And uh, I can stand here and say that, that uh, at that day I had no, no desire, or did I know, that I would go from the, the floor to the pulpit. But God knows. God knew. And it's amazing. And... Uh, after all this time, we've had some difficulties. <laughs> I can't but, imagine that. Yeah. But uh, praise God for each and also, every day. God, I don't know how many years yeah. he has. Ask God how many years he's been married. God, how many years you've been married? Too many. <laughs> <laughs> 63. 63. 63. Two weeks ago on a Friday, we went and there was program and there was a gentleman who was soon to be 98 World War II veteran served in the Philippines he was married to his, is married to his wife for 75 years so wow so praise God for each and every anniversary and each and every event that has brought us brought each of us this far by way of announcements tomorrow evening at uh, 6.30 will be a leadership meeting right here at 6.30 at the church. And also uh, coming up on February the 19th, the, the newsletter articles are due. Uh, see Mary Sue for information, and she will be able more than glad to take it for you. Uh, Monday the 20th, a scrapbooking at the Country Comfort. And then also on February the 26th, will be a congregation meeting here at the church directly following the service, worship service that day. Uh, wise cards are still ava available. You can list it there. You can see Mary Sue, Mary Crump, or, or Vaughn. And also uh, listed there for the month of February, our birthdays, uh, for country comfort. Uh, we were given this information here from the, the Methodist Church next door. On Ash Wednesday, the 22nd, there will be a time of stop and go, soup and ashes. Uh, this will be posted out on the bulletin board from noon until 2 p.m. on the 22nd. Also then coming up, a uh, time of quiet time and communion on Maudie Thursday. Isn't it amazing? We're getting closer and closer to resurrection morning. Praise God. On Monday, Thursday, there will be a quiet time and communion on the uh, on April the 6th, again from 12 till noon. I'll post these out on the bulletin board if so that you, you can get further information. We received a, a thank you card uh, from the uh, uh, Becky Montgomery. It says, thank you for the opportunity to share or update uh, for the Expectations Women's Center with your congregation. So Tim and I enjoyed the conversation and laughter. We shared lunch. Uh, we yeah, we didn't get to go. Uh, oh, oh, we'll share lunch another time. Uh, and that would be delighted. Many blessings, Becky Montgomery. So I mean, I can't read your writing, you know. <laughs> we have a question box now. Okay, yes. The, uh, for the Bible question of the month, there's now a answer box over in the uh, in the Sunday school. Put your answers in the box, and uh, hopefully I'll be a little bit easier to discern where the, the answer is this time. I said it's great that you were able to open up your Bibles and try and discern uh, what was happening with the question. But when you found it out, it was really relatively simple. Okay, any other announcements? I just wanted to let people know I got some new newsletters from missions um, I'll put out in the bulletin board. There's one from Haven Ministries, from Racetrack, Chaplaincy, and Ronald McDonald House, and the Heart to Hand Ministries. Awesome. Uh, 
Anna, you have a reading for the concerning love gift. Take a few moments and go to the Lord in prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. Lord, we've combined here together to give you praise, honor, and glory. We worship you, for you alone are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of the songs that we sing reflecting you. And Lord, we, you are worthy for all the things that transfer, transpire in our lives. Lord, we, we thank you for each and every problem that is solved, every, dif every difficulty that is overcome, every illness that has been healed, and we give you glory for that. And Lord, as we gather here this morning to worship you, may your spirit resonate in our hearts, that we can rejoice in the fact of the gift that you have given each and every one of us who have claimed you as our Savior. And Lord, you alone are worthy of our praise. Lord, we are the participants. You are the audience. Be with us now as we begin to worship and to praise. Because you alone are worthy of our praise. Stand as we sing the doctrine. 
Jesus' name. There is no name other than Jesus that gives us the strength and the energy to continue each and every day. Jamie, you have a song for you. Who wants this morning? The children want to come up and we'll eat Jesus' love.
title of this morning's message. Who has the authority? Who has the authority in your life? Who has the authority in your family? Who has the authority in your church? Who has the authority in our government? Or in government, per se? I just read a a brief book called the Roadmap, Roadmap to Renewal. It's uh, based on you know, what we here in this nation need to return to. And that is indeed what God has intended for each and every one of us and each and every one of us as a nation. There's three areas that I cataloged out of this book that where God should have total control because he started he he has total control because he made it in brought it to to fruition he brought it about and like every map and most of you know that you know I enjoy maps maps every map has a starting place and it takes you along the route that you travel. The route, the route to renewal, begins with individuals who have taken and made the choice to have God as their Savior, to love and to honor Him, and accept that free gift of eternal life. To allow God to rule and reign in our lives. The three areas where God has total control and authority is family, church, and government. And I said that before. I originally had visions of grandeur that I was going to cover all three of those topics in one day. But I don't believe that's going to happen. We're going to start with the family. You know, and to start with the family, we need to go, go back to the beginning. You know, see, we can... Scripture tells us that God created family. And we find that in Genesis, Genesis chapter 2. And we can also realize the authority that God has. God is, God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's, he's all-powerful. There is nothing that God cannot do with the exception of sin. God cannot sin. And God is everywhere. So he is the sovereign authority over this terrestrial wall and the people thereof. He made each and every one of us as images in, of God, created in the image of God. But he implanted into us a unique option, if you will. He gave us free will of choice. And that free will of choice is to whether we wish to love and accept God as our Savior or reject God and go about our own way. You know, if you love someone, you know, you, you do it because in this up and coming week we'll see a lot of Valentine's Day and stuff and things like that. It's easier and it's more pleasant to love someone because you want to. Versus like a robot or an automatron. You must love me. It isn't easier that way. It's not easier to, to love someone because you're told to. But because you want to. And that's the way God designed us. And to do that, we go back to the beginning. And sometimes you'll hear these quotations that come during a wedding service or something of that nature. It says, for the Lord God said, it is not good for man that he should be alone. I will make for him a helper compatible to him. And of course, you know that God did indeed create Adam to have a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took a portion of his rib and created woman. 
And after he created water, the rib which the Lord had taken from, from man, he made into woman. And then there's this very unique clause, this very unique statement. And I'm in Genesis chapter 2, verses 16, excuse me, 18, 18 through 20. It says, after God made the woman, he brought her to the man. God brought the woman to the man. At that point, God instituted family. So if God created man and woman, he also created the family. And in a perfect, non-sinful world, it would have lasted for eternity. But then in Genesis 3, we've got a different ballgame. Of course, if you don't know, Genesis chapter 3 is the fall of man. In that, in that perfect union prior to the fall, the Word of God tells us that therefore a man should leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. In other words, compatible, thinking the same thing, doing the same thing, working together hand in hand. But then all too well we know what took place in Genesis chapter 3. We have the fall of man, which changed everything. A lot of times when I'm counseling individuals for, for weddings prior to their marriage, we'll go down through a whole list of things, and this is one of them. You see, Back in the Garden of Eden, God had commanded not Noah, but Adam to do the things in the garden. But because of the sin, now his job, he'll still have to do his job, but his he will be greatly hindered at being able to do that. And of course, God also challenged and said to the woman, that uh, you will be greatly multiplied in your sorrow and your conception and pain shall you bring forth children. Your desire will be for your husband and he shall rule over you. Whoa. And of course, he said to Adam, because you heed the voice of your wife and I've eaten the, from the tree of life which, commanded, which I commanded you not to eat. Cursed be the ground for your sake. In toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. But thorns and thistles shall be brought forth. The obstructions. So he still had to do his job. But there would be obstructions. You see, when sin entered into the world, everything changed. Now, there is some cultures that, that believe that women are little more than property. And there is some cultures that believe that you know, a, woman, a woman's voice has no, no authority. Even locally there is some of that. We see though that when we're looking at the New Testament we see parameters that are in the in biblical culture. We see that, you know, throughout Scripture, in the Old Testament and in the New, we see that it's pretty much a male-dominated society. And when we're, we're, we're engaging folks in looking at marriage, I always take them to, to uh, Ephesians chapter 5 and 22 through 25. In 5 through 22, it says, Wives, submit yourself to your own husband. And even in some of the marriage vows, it will say, you know, to, to honor, obey, and obey him. And I've seen some resistance. You know, what do you mean, obey him? <laughs> but then they forget to read the rest of the verse. 
Wives, submit yourself to your own husband as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife. And here's the one that the catchphrase. As also Christ is the head of the church and the Savior of the body. And when you explain that to this perspective couple, yes, Scripture does say that the man is supposed to be ruled over the woman. But only if he's willing to die for you. As Christ died for each and every one of us. As Christ died for the church. Christ is our Savior of the body. Isn't it more acceptable to know that that one that you're married to is willing to stand and take the truck that's coming down the road and push you out of the way? Willing to die in your place? Isn't it nice to know that we can honor someone like And then, Scripture then says, you know, if a marriage is to be blessed with children, the Bible gives us all types of instructions on what we should be doing when it comes to raising our children. Now, I'm going to put in a, a note right here. You may be in a situation or have been in situations that this message might be hitting home. It's kind of a downer message. But I want you to stand here this morning and understand that life has many choices. And don't be kicking yourself down because of a situation, a life situation of the past whether it be in, in marital stresses or whether it be in raising children or disciplining children that come into the You did the best that you could with the information that you had at the time. And you made a decision. You know, hindsight is always 2020. As we sit and we look back over the things that we have done and said over the years. But there's hope in that. The situation, you can be forgiven from the decisions of the past. <clears throat> forgiven by God. And then you move on. Learning something from those past mistakes. Anyone who is in close contact with someone for a long period of time, you begin to realize that. But when it comes to raising children, if you're blessed with children, there comes a time when we can look to Scripture. We can look to Proverbs where it says, train up a child in the ways that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. We don't need a textbook on raising children. We just need to read Exodus 20. In that period of time where it says there in Proverbs, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. You may have been able to implant an individual, take him to Sunday school, take him to church, you know, and he's still going up to be a wild child. That time where it says when they grow old, you don't know how long that is. But you've planted that seed. You've planted maybe water. Eventually, it should take root. It says, husbands, love your wives just as Christ so loved the church and gave his life himself for her. When our kids hurt, we are. When our wives and children, when our wives hurt, we are. Because we love them. And when it says in Ephesians chapter 6, it says, 
as a father and a husband. It is our responsibility to bring up children, to bring them up in the training and the admonition of the, war, of the, of the Lord. Don't provoke your children into wrath. How many of you have heard the story of, you know, an individual that said, well, how did you come to the Lord? And he says, drugs. Really? Yeah. My mom drove me to church. My grandma drove me to church. That's how I come to know the Lord. I was drunk. <laughs> so God has given authority. He developed and made the family. Do we need godly influence in our families today? Yes. That's a question you can answer. Yes. I see some heads shaking. Would a godly influence in a family make a difference in the children today? Yes. And if you don't believe that, just ask anybody who is in close proximity of children on a daily basis. In the last 40 or 50 years, has children's attitudes changed? Yes. yes. Yeah. Has the adult parents of those children changed? What took place? God has been eradicated from their lives. Every aspect and avenue. We can't have a nativity scene. We can't do scripture. I can remember as a kid and that uh, we used to read Bibles before the class started. Now that gives you how antique I may be. Not as, as antique as some, but I can remember that far. One of the few things I remember from those years. So God instituted into the family. And if God is, is an important part, if God rules and reigns in the hearts of the individuals in the family, that will then become in the children. And you see, it's repetitious. It moves on from generation to generation. I originally had thought that I would be through this the whole way. But I guess we're going to have to stop. Because the next, the next thing that we need to look at is the church. We need to see the influence that God has on the church. Because God created the church. He is the author of the church. He is the, the, the founder of the church. And oh, how we need to hear that which comes from God's word. But I don't want you to think that this message is a downer this morning for about family. You know, we've each grown up in families that are sometimes dysfunctional. Sometimes it's, it's difficult Maybe you were fortunate enough to have uh, parents that took you to church, Sunday school and church. You've become a member of that same church. And you brought your, your children. You married in that church. And brought, well, I have to admit, the only reason I started coming here over 47 years ago was to see her. But God knew what was going to transpire. The situations and problems that we face as a nation. If we can start at the beginning point, like I said, any roadmap has a starting place. The roadmap starts in the home. It starts in the home with being and allowing God to rule and reign in our hearts. I'm not saying that you're going to do everything perfect. You know, God rules and reigns in our hearts, but he has chosen imperfect vessels. Each and every one of us are imperfect. Or excuse me, not perfect. So what we need is to allow God to have total authority in our families. And next week we'll be looking at how God has total, has 
total authority over his church. And maybe if there's enough time, I'll squeeze in government. I thank you for your attention this morning. It's been awful quiet. Not a whole lot of amens and things of that nature. This is a touchy subject, but it's one that needs to be addressed. You know, we've all grown up in families that are strained, sometimes estranged, with difficult situations, whether it be financial, whether it be, uh, you know, custodies and things of that nature, whether it be a whole host of, of uh, problems in the home that relate from substance abuse and also other abuses. But I want to give you hope this morning. Regardless of all of those things that have taken place in the past, they're behind you. And don't worry about them today. If you ask God to forgive you for those items and those sins, it's gone. And don't let the devil whip it up on you to thinking that you're still guilty of something. Today is the yesterday that you worried about tomorrow. Did I get it right? I don't know. Today is the tomorrow. Today is the tomorrow you worried about yesterday. I keep getting it wrong. <laughs> and when we, we look at it from that aspect, did our worry help us in any way? Because if we know the Lord is with us, He walks with us, He rules and reigns in our lives and our hearts, we've got a lot to look forward to. We can stand and proclaim, He lives and He rules and reigns. Join us now, stand as we sing our, our closing hymn. Number 372 in the blue hymn, Our God Reigns.
Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 